We had no idea we would end up building a tiny home in a school bus until we saw someone else do it on YouTube. So we traded our old beat up pickup truck for a 1992 Bluebird All-American school bus and spent the next three years converting it into our home. When it was finished, we downsized everything we owned, moved out of our rental house and into the school bus full time. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Carrie. And this is Bussy McBusface. When you first step into the foyer of the schoolie, there's cupboards to your left and right. And the first one is the first of our two diesel heaters that heats the front of our bus. The controller for it is right here and the vent blows out here. And this cupboard was exactly the right size for my shoes, so we call it the shoe shack. And then this larger cupboard on the other side fits Mike's bigger, bulkier boots and shoes, plus a cubby for his backpacks or other gear. We call it the boot barn. The cockpit is really Mike's area of the bus. We kept the original dashboard, but Mike added some controls for his lights and other techie gadgets over here. In this area, up above the windshield, we built two recessed bookshelves, and we keep them in with a bungee cord stretched between two drawer knobs. We also have a mini split air conditioner, which we can run for a portion of the day on our solar power when we're boondocking. After that, all we have to do is run the generator to keep our air conditioner on. This is our media cabinet. In the top drawer, we have chargers for everything we own that needs charged. The second drawer holds all kinds of gear, remote controls, camera equipment, and computer equipment, and then more camera equipment and gear in the bottom cupboard. When you first step into our living room, dining room area, you notice that there's a lot of natural light. Typically in schoolies, because the ceiling is low and the windows are low, a lot of light doesn't get to the ceiling area and they can be very dark and feel claustrophobic. So having a skylight lets in a ton of natural light and makes it feel much brighter and bigger in here. We chose a translucent skylight instead of clear because it allows the light in without creating a hot spot. One thing we did that's pretty unusual for a schoolie is putting in a full-size couch instead of building our own. We just wanted the comfort of a commercially built sofa that we knew we couldn't create on our own. Mike made us this really incredible dinette, and I sewed the cushions for it myself. The tabletop is actually a leftover piece of the butcher block countertops, and underneath the seats, we have plenty of space for storage. Also, the tabletop drops down into a lower position so we can convert this dinette into another couch for extra seating or a bed for an overnight guest. Our primary source of heat in the schoolie is the Dwarf 4K from tinywoodstoves.com. Even though we have two diesel heaters, we prefer using the wood-burning stove for several reasons. Obviously, the ambiance is awesome with the glass door in the wood-burning stove, but also the heat is different. The diesel heaters are nice when you just need to heat something up in a hurry, but as soon as you turn them off, the temperature starts to cool down again, whereas with a wood-burning stove, you can build a fire one time, and the heat lasts for hours and hours, even after the fire has died down. Underneath the hearth is our kitty cave. There is an opening in this cupboard that goes into a bed for Mama Kitty, and then when she's inside there, there's also a little kitty door flap that goes over to the other side, and that's where the kitty litter is. The great thing is that there is a small fan in the back, constantly running and exhausting air outside of the bus, so we never have any kitty litter odors in our bus. One of my favorite parts of the whole bus build is this kitchen, and I love it because when I'm in here, I don't feel isolated from everybody else in the rest of the house because we're in such a small space, we're still all in the same space together. So I find that I've spent a lot more time cooking and baking and loving it since we've moved into the bus. 
I do all my cooking and baking on a propane RV oven that we picked up on Craigslist for 50 bucks and it works great. The oven temperature is accurate and even though it looks like a miniature oven, it still fits a 9 by 13 baking dish and also even a full size 11 by 17 cookie sheet. So I'm not limited at all as to what I can bake in the bus. We started out with a very expensive RV refrigerator because we thought that's what we needed to have, but it never functioned right and ended up draining our batteries too much. So we replaced it with a very basic 110 volt apartment size refrigerator, which has worked great for us ever since we installed it. All we have to do is use the child safety locks to latch our refrigerator before we drive. In this cupboard, we keep our spices in these storage containers for one thing to prevent them from shifting around while we drive and then coming out in an avalanche when we open the door, but also because it makes it easier to slide them out and find the spice you're looking for. In this cupboard, we keep coffee and tea. In the drawer under the fridge are my baking pans and large Tupperware. In the drawer tower are cooking utensils, dish towels and pot holders, foil and ziplocs, and miscellaneous kitchen gadgets. In the drawer under the oven are pots and pans. And in this little cupboard, we keep a box fan that fits exactly into our skylight opening so we can either blow air into the bus or exhaust air out. We chose to put in a full-size double basin sink, which we got at Habitat for Humanity for like $35. And we love the curve in the back of each basin because you can set a full-size baking dish down into the sink to soak it in water and it fits perfectly. Mike also built this custom dish drainer above the sink so when you put your wet dishes up there, the water drips back down into the sink while they dry. To save space, many schoolies don't install a bathroom sink, we just use our kitchen sink. So I created a broken mug mosaic to hold our daily use bathroom items and keep them close at hand while also out of the way in our kitchen. One of my favorite features in this whole kitchen is the double door pantry Mike built for me with slide out shelves for all my baking supplies, my canned goods, pastas and grains, snacks and cereals, and the fact that they slide out makes it very easy to reach something all the way in back so those items don't get lost and forgotten back there. Under the bottom slide out is where our water heater is housed, which means it's right in between our sink and our shower so we can get hot water to both places the most efficiently. The things in our cupboards are all of the same things you would expect to find in any home. This is where we keep our dishes. We use this cupboard as our medicine cabinet. We have a junk drawer just like everybody else. Down here we have a few kitchen appliances like our Vitamix and KitchenAid. Under the sink is our water filtration system, a fire extinguisher, some cleaning supplies and cat supplies. In this cupboard, we have a toaster and a crock pot, but also some paperwork and office supplies and board games because weird things come together like that in a small space like this. This is our main silverware drawer. We have a slide out cutting board that gives us extra counter space. And next to that, we have a slide out trash so we can actually slide the scraps off the cutting board into the trash. Very convenient. This is our castle door. Obviously, it separates the kitchen and living room from the bathroom and bedroom in the back of the bus, but it also creates two distinct climate zones, so we only have to heat or cool one half of the bus at a time, so it's just more efficient. And don't worry, there will be a stained glass window in this opening when we're finished. We designed our bathroom with a very open floor plan instead of an enclosed cubicle around the toilet, which in our case is an airhead composting toilet. We chose this one because we loved that it had an actual toilet seat, which makes it feel more like you're using an ordinary toilet. Also, we plumbed the urine diverter of the toilet down into our black water tank underneath the bus, so we never have to worry about dumping a jug full of urine. One of the most popular features in our schoolie is the broken dish mosaic. 
I actually saw a woman doing a broken tile mosaic on a YouTube channel, and I wanted to do that, but I couldn't find ceramic tile in the bright colors I wanted to use, so I used ceramic dishes instead. Each little mosaic piece you see is actually a piece of a broken dinner plate that I purchased at thrift stores. The things you see in the mosaic were inspired by events in real life, like swimming with turtles in the Virgin Islands, seeing my first pufferfish in the Bahamas, the coral reef was inspired by snorkeling in the Virgin Islands, and the tiny school bus on the ocean floor was inspired by a cartoon my kids used to watch called the Magic School Bus. Even the hot air balloon was from a time when I lived on a ranch out in the middle of nowhere, and one morning a whole group of hot air balloons was coming up the valley, and this one actually stopped and landed, picked me up, and took me for a ride. It was one of the most amazing experiences in my entire life. And the mosaic isn't even finished yet. It will actually continue above and below the toilet and wrapping around onto this wall, where it will be a night sky with moon and stars over the ocean. We brought our full-size washing machine out of our house into the bus with us. It's not one of those washer-dryer combos. We didn't get one of those because the cycle takes so long it uses too much energy. So we just wash our clothes here. We can either dry them on a clothesline or take them to a laundromat to use the dryer if we choose. But the best part is the full-size slide-out laundry drawer underneath the washing machine. It's so important to remember a place to put your laundry in your schoolie. One of the things I really wanted in the bedroom was enough space to be able to change clothes without hitting your elbows on the walls. And Mike was able to accomplish that and still give us plenty of room in these gigantic his and hers closets. There's plenty of space for hanging clothes on one side of the closet and shelves that hold these storage bins on the other side. There's actually two storage bins on each shelf, so you can decide which seasonal clothing goes in the front or the back. Underneath the closets, we each have two gigantic drawers that are super deep and wide, so they hold a ton of clothing. And we each have two additional cupboards with plenty of room for storing our personal items. We installed a second skylight in the bedroom, so we have plenty of natural light back here as well. And there's also a max fan, which can blow air into the room or vent it out. We have a cozy little bed nook with a queen-size bed, which is where Mama Kitty spends most of her time. And we chose a chinoiserie wallpaper with an outdoor scene, which we feel opens up the space and makes it feel not so small. One of the coolest things in this bed nook are these awesome pocket windows. You can slide them open and open the windows to get a cross breeze blowing across the bedroom or shut them to block out sound and have complete privacy. That pretty much wraps up everything inside the bus. Now Mike is going to show you around the outside. I think to start the outside of this tour we should talk about the color of our bus. The color of the bus went through so many uh, iterations and decisions and fights even but at some point uh, we had seen a, a big semi going by in this bright green color and we were both like yeah I like that yeah I like that too and we kind of settled on a green so at that point it was just finding the right shade of green we ended up going with the East Hardware version of Rust-Oleum which is uh, uh, what was it vibrant meadow is the name of the color we sprayed the whole bus with that we put a uh, automotive clear coat with some pearl in it to get this finish right here and honestly we're super happy with it it's so neat when you're you know off someplace and you pull around a corner or you're looking down off a hill and you see this bright green bus there <laughs> it's just like that's our home it's cool when we uh, were first building this bus I knew I wanted some extra lights on the front because the headlights that were on it were super anemic you could barely see so we upgraded the headlights and then I added some extra lights and then I kind of got a little carried away. Christopher McCandless, or otherwise known as Alexander Supertramp, was one of my personal like heroes. The guy like really wanted to live his life to the fullest. He had very alternative ideas about how life should be lived and stuff. And unfortunately his uh, life ended very tragically in a bus in Alaska, bus number 142. So this is kind of a memorial to him and a quote that they found in his diary after they found his body. And uh, so we wanted to have, I wanted to have a little piece of this on, on the bus just because it, it affected the way I thought about life a lot. 
This right here, these right here are our most recent additions to the bus. These not only help level the bus in some fairly you know, a little bit of leveling needs to be done. These do perfect for that. But they also stabilize the bus and keep it perfectly stable. When you get inside the bus, it doesn't shake. When I climb up on the deck, it doesn't shake the whole house. So this was a really nice addition to the bus. Early on, I think in most people's builds, there's gonna be a great big concern about storage. And this bus didn't come with the big bays underneath. And we really just wanted the clearance, honestly so that we could get into more areas. But we did want some outside storage to carry things in the bus that wouldn't necessarily, you wouldn't want to carry in the house, different dirty tools, the things for dumping our, our black water, stuff like that. So we actually fabricated frames that would fit these boxes here. And we slid these boxes in and then used bolts to, to hold them in place. And they honestly have uh, uh, done their job perfectly to keep all our our water related stuff and, and power related stuff in there for shorelining and for dumping and filling. And then over here, we have a lot of tools and some miscellaneous stuff in here, but it's really been nice because this is the stuff you just wouldn't probably keep in your house. This is our uh, black tank dump valve and also our gray water dump. And what makes this unique in our bus is not only uh, do we can we capture our gray water, but we can also just divert it directly out. So in Arizona, dumping gray water, which would include your washing machine and your shower, can go right to ground. So if we use this valve right here, this valve just allows our gray water to go out to ground. We have a big three-way valve on the other side of the bus that we can use to switch and actually capture that water if we're in a place where we can't just dump it right on the ground if we stayed in some kind of RV park or something like that. So we have 80 gallons of black water capacity, which easily lasts us two weeks. This is our water fill station slash shoreline. So we have the ability to put water right in here, which goes right into our tank, or we can use this right here and we can hook up pressurized water to the bus. And we have a valve inside that allows us to switch from internal water to shoreline water. And then we can use the pressure of whatever we're you know tied into which then gives us unlimited water and things like that which is really nice we're also able to if we're shoreline we can just divert some water back to the tank and fill our um, fill our freshwater tank just from there initially i thought about putting a deck back here carrying some kind of motorcycle there was this idea of having a big like tool barn back here i mean a lot of there's a lot of ideas but ultimately we went probably the most healthy idea, the bicycles. And though we haven't used them that much, they're here and we're gonna use them eventually, I know it. <laughs> but when we built this, we made it so that, uh, we made our bus so we could tow a tow vehicle. So this is the, the tow rig right here and we can hook it up to the front of our Jeep. But we had this piece added on, allowing us to have the uh, mount for the uh, bicycle rack separate so we could do both. So we could actually tow and have our bikes up here at the same time. Our engine is the Caterpillar 3116 engine. Um, and our transmission is the Allison MT643. It's a heavy duty transmission, it's kind of the same ones you'll find in, in uh, semis and stuff. And uh, it's, been, it's been good. We had some overheating problems initially, but we did some things and changed some things to make it uh, uh, much more reliable in that respect so it doesn't get hot anymore we also have a backup generator back here um, this is the honda 2000i and we have an external tank for it right here and uh, we can run this thing 24 hours straight if we want to run our air conditioning or things like that things that sometimes the solar can't handle for for long periods of time uh, the generator will take over if we have clouds just wanted to have a backup so we don't get stuck without any power this right here was a major improvement for us this is an external uh, auxiliary radiator we added utilizing what used to be the uh, heater lines. And it flows through here and, and provides a great deal more cooling to the engine. This is a, a aftermarket 1967 Chevy Chevelle uh, radiator with shroud and fans built in. So all I had to do was wire up uh, the fans and, and plumb the hosing. I had to adapt it with some you know step downs, but uh, other than that, this has made a huge difference in our ability to cool the bus on big hills and climbs.
quite a bit of thought went into being able to resupply the bus without having to move it. It's already, it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt to, to get your bus moving. So you have to move your clean up stuff, put stuff away and, and stow things and lock things. And it just takes a while. So it's quite a bit easier just to bring supplies back to the bus if you can. So sometimes we'll need you some propane. So we built this custom rack here for our propane. And that way, if one of them is low, we can just grab grab that one and go fill it, put it in here. We have a valve here that automatically switches between the two when one runs out. So we never like run out of propane and we have never run out of propane. Surprisingly, this propane system lasts months and months when you're, since you're using it so little, maybe just for a stove or your oven and the hot water heater. So it actually lasts a long, long time. This is our little outdoor shower here. And uh, it's, it's kind of nice having a little bit of outdoor water, uh, more so just to clean off things that you wouldn't want to bring in the house and clean. Or if you're at the beach, you can you know, rinse off your feet or rinse off your wetsuit or whatever it is. It's just nice having an outdoor water source to handle that. This is our Gerard water heater. Um, it's a direct replacement for your normal uh, square water heater in an RV. Uh, except this is on demand and this thing has been a hundred percent the entire time it uh the i was really concerned when i read the reviews because people are going back and forth oh it doesn't work it does work and such never had a problem with it always works you just have to know how they work in order to make it work for you um, the other thing that's uh, uh nice about this thing is it has a built-in protection against cold so when it's really when it's in the you know in the low 30s or even the 20s this thing will kick on every once in a while and heat itself up so that the uh, heat exchanger inside doesn't freeze and burst. So it has self-protection and it's always been 100%. This storage here we didn't build, this came with the bus. However, it was just the uh, spare tire uh, bin. So normally a bus could carry its own spare tire in here if they had a flat. We don't use it for that, obviously. Um, we keep a lot of miscellaneous stuff in here. We keep the uh, peat moss for our, our uh, composting toilet. We keep some extra wood that we've already cut and stacked over here. Um, we keep kindling in here. We keep extra fuel for our generator in here. Some axes, a small electric chainsaw. Just a whole bunch of miscellaneous stuff that you definitely wouldn't keep inside the bus. It's been the perfect size for us even though we didn't order it that way. It just came with a bus, but it's been like we're in here pretty often. One of the things we also wanted to add that was just like this like total tangent in the entire bus build, but we thought it would be really cool, is uh, we wanted a barbecue. So we made a barbecue. We made it so we could slide it out and uh, be able to grill outside and be able to put it away when we're done. We haven't used it as much as we would like to, but in our defense, we moved into the bus in the middle of winter. So it's coming into spring and summer right now, and there'll be a lot more grilling going on in this bus. A popular thing amongst uh, bus life enthusiasts is having a roof deck. And we went a little overboard with our deck. Uh, we went ahead and did a 40 foot roof deck. Our bus, bus is 40 feet long stem to stern but it gave us a place to mount our solar and mount different things on it so come on up let's check it out so the impetus for this deck actually came from ansel adams i do a lot of photography this is the place i could come up and shoot it from and i needed a stable platform to do that there was a picture of ansel adams standing on top of this large kind of jeep slash station wagon thing and it had a full deck and he's up there with his big land camera and i was so inspired by that i just wanted to have a place like this where i could come and take pictures looking over all the general foliage on the ground and get a different angle on things carrie mentioned the skylight when she was uh, touring the inside and this was something that we over engineered so that we wouldn't have any water coming in but also it just allows for uh, the hot air to escape the bus it's been we use it almost every day as it gets warmer this was our last piece of storage that we added on and it was kind of a last last whim 
that we did it. But uh, we wanted to be able to just keep our chairs and, and different things up here. So all we have to do to come up here is pull some chairs out and enjoy our deck. So we've actually used this thing a lot, but it also doubles as a place for us to just sit when we want to come up here quickly and just enjoy something. Or if, if you know, just a quick seat when you're up here to talk about something. We have 1,530 watts of solar on our, on our deck on the bus. Um, some people have done an absurd amount more than that, but this hasn't failed us. This has actually been enough for what we do. We were able to charge our batteries. Uh, in the dead of winter, when it was the shortest day of the year, um, it was getting fully charged in the probably the late afternoon. Um, but with the sun much higher in the sky now, we our batteries are fully charged by 10 or 11 in the after in the morning. It's quick. This is the uh, outside component of our mini split AC. And uh, we actually just recessed it a little bit so it didn't seem like it was gonna be such a tumor sticking up here on top of the bus. We had talked about possibly putting it underneath the bus, but in the end, we kind of run out of room underneath the bus. So you'd be surprised how fast you can use that up uh, with the stuff you stick underneath there. But the other side of it is I was really fearful of subjecting this to road grime that uh, it wouldn't face being up here. So. In the end, we chose the roof and recessing it so it doesn't stick up so high. And it's worked really well for us. This right here started out as just a mast to put the weather station on, and it has evolved. We really wanted to have a weather station, I did anyway. I just like to know, when you get that gust of wind that shakes the bus, how fast was it? How much rain, rain did fell last night? You know, stuff like that. So uh, that's what it started off as. But then it kind of evolved into uh, this is an antenna right here for our uh, internet that we use inside the bus and this is directional antenna so we're able to really pull internet from quite a ways away. This right here, I use this for tracking aircraft because I'm a total nerd, but it also doubles as a different antenna for our um, WeBoost inside. It allows us to uh, have omnidirectional versus directional antenna for that. Thank you so much for joining us on our tour. If you have any questions or if there's anything we missed, put it in the comments below and we'll get back to you. If you guys want more details on how we built this bus, check out our entire build series with over 100 videos detailing everything we did to build this schoolie. If you want to keep up with our current adventures, you can follow us right here on YouTube or follow us on Instagram at bussy.mcbusface. And don't forget our latest busface stickers are available on Etsy. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like this if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And you guys go out and make your own dreams come true. Thanks so much. Thanks bye guys. bye. bye.